Hey guys and welcome back to Pixel Cherry Ninja's channel. This is my second video on the Arc S. So this is the Arc S, the Linux version. So there is a custom firmware out. It's not uh, fully publicly released. There's only a beta available. So in this video, we're going to have a look at lit a little bit of that custom firmware, uh, and we're going to have I'm going to show you guys how to install it. Now in this guide, uh, if uh, by the time you're watching this video, if there's a different custom firmware out, you can refer back to this guide. The installation process will be exactly the same but you can apply the same principle to a newer firmware so yeah guys before we get into the video if you're not subscribed to the channel then hey a subscription and a like is super appreciated yeah let's get into this <music> guys so the first thing is first head over to uh, the invite link in the description of the video if for any reason the invite link uh, link has expired sometimes uh, they have expiries um, hit me up in the comments and I'll, I'll change it to a fresh one but head over to uh, this discord over here which is called retro game handhelds when you go over to the discord head over to the ambernix section and and the top uh, at least the top one there at this time it's rg arc d and s that's where you want to head over to you can find the beta firmware here it's usually posted within the comments you'll have to find it yourself uh, i got it from this link here i'll leave a link to where i downloaded the beta free uh, custom firmware from in the description if for any reason this link's expired you'll have to head back to the discord and just ask and be polite about it and hopefully you can get it it's quite possible by the time you're watching this there's a different beta route or you know version one the public version is out uh, but i have to say um, just a little spoiler alert even this beta is better than what comes bundled as stock uh, on the Arc OS from Ambernix. So uh, before uh, before I show you the installation process, I want to send a special thank you out to Tech Toy Tinker Company. Very, very helpful. I've asked uh, quite a lot of questions over uh, on the Discord and the guys have been very, very helpful. So a big shout out to you and, uh, and also a shout out to the developer of the firmware, the Retro Arena. Uh, they have a Patreon. So if... Um, yeah, if you want to support them for the work they're doing, you appreciate it. Well, you know, you can do. I'll leave all relevant links in the description of the video. But uh, now let's go over and have a look how to actually ins uh, how to actually install it once we've downloaded our firmware. OK, once we have downloaded uh, our download, um, yeah, what you want to do is extract it or come as a zip file. Uh, extract it using your favorite extraction software i like 7-zip and that's what i'm using and it'll take just uh, just a few minutes to extract now another thing i want to point out here is your your device comes in uh, or it's got two sd card slots you can you know depending on what option you purchase you can i purchased one with just one micro sd card so in in the slot on the left hand side uh, there was a 16 gig micro sd card so one thing to point out here, this custom firmware, you require an SD card larger than 16 gig. I tried fitting it on a 16 gig card, it doesn't fit. If you get the next size up, the, a 32 gig one, yes, it will work. I actually used the 128 card because that's what I had lying around. So very, very important, make sure you've got a, a micro SD card, 32 gig minimum, and maybe, maybe get yourself a good brand like Sa uh, Sandisk, Kingston, uh, Samsung. Right guys, once we have extracted it, you're gonna see the folder. We can have a look inside the folder. So over here, you can you can see S, uh, SD2 platform structure. So for your second SD card where your games are gonna be, it's got the whole structure set out there for you. So what you wanna do is grab all the files here and copy these onto SD card two. So not the SD card that's gonna be used to put your custom firmware on, the other SD card which is gonna be used for games. And the other item you've got in here that you can see over here is the RA Arc Beta Free. Then what you want to do is head over and use some image burning software. Uh, I, I like using Win32 Disk Imager, but there's a few different ones out there. I think I used to use one called Rufus, but whichever one you got, if you're unsure about that, then maybe search YouTube and do a little search online for image burning software. Uh, but like I said, you can use the one I'm using. It's free to use. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a download link in the description. So what you want to do is once you launch that, make sure you pick the correct drive. Like I nearly picked EE, which is a 512 uh, SD card I actually have in my device. So I nearly formatted that. So just make sure you are using the correct drive. Once you pick the correct drive, yeah, which in my case is G, just uh, just select it, select right, and it will start burning that OS. It will start burning the custom firmware 
onto the micro SD card so it can act as the operating system and uh, kind of what you saw at the beginning and what we'll have a look at now is what this actually brings and that's that's pretty much it once this process completes you're like you're pretty much good to go guys and then you know we'll insert the, the micro SD card in and we'll have a look at some of the stuff on there that's not like really my big focus I got my machine for like fighting uh, mainly the fighting games and I'm happy not pushing it to its limit but we will have a look at a little bit of Saturn a little bit of Dreamcast and like maybe a couple of other bits one thing uh, I would like to point out straight out of the bat is now I couldn't find an option to connect a Wi-Fi from uh, within the Ambernic kind of menu from within the OS I couldn't find it but hey you know what there's a way around that so you can go into RetroArch and then settings and you can go enable Wi-Fi and select Wi-Fi uh, from within RetroArch and that will save Wi-Fi uh, you know all around the system. And once our custom firmware is on, I thought I'd try some Saturn games. I'm only going to try two. We're going to try like a 3D one. So this is Daytona USA. You can see the frames per second up there plus the frame skip. But you can see we're never really getting a, a constant or we're, not, we're never quite hitting 60 frames per second. So uh, I know some people want to push their machines to the limit. I, I'm not about that. But for the, for the sake of this video, and, and it was very, very easy to do, you know, the folders were created. I just had to add the BIOSes myself uh, and add my games on there and that's it i was uh, i was done but uh it's still an okay playable experience but you're not getting that full 60 fps at least not on the 3d games that i tested for the saturn in regard to 2d saturn games they run they run a lot better uh, as you can see sorry the colors are bright I had my screen brightness too up that's why the colors have uh, have come out a little bit funny but while i was filming it or at the time on, on my mobile phone it kind of looked all right but as you can see 2d games uh, they run okay they hold that 60 fps now i know uh, saturn emulation isn't the best but this was still kind of fun to play uh, on here and if you don't know what this game is this is golden axe the duel so you remember golden axe the arcade beat em up well there's a fighting game version of that it's available it's a lot of fun uh, and it uses six buttons so it's nice to have the six face buttons to play this and that's the main reason i got this is for six button fighters and uh, mega drive as well as arcade games that kind of have like three buttons for so for stuff like shadow dancer golden axe the arcade game you know where they have like jump attack and magic but yeah two of these saturn games are good so at least for me like a lot of the saturn games i want to play are 2d games so uh, i think they'll run adequately uh, on this not the best emulation but definitely not the worst out there and a lot of the 2d stuff you're going to find it's going to run at the correct uh, fps at 60 fps instead of like frame dropping and frame skipping Let's have a look at a Dreamcast game. I didn't really have too many on there. I'm not really intending on playing Dreamcast here, but this is uh, Cannon Spike. And uh, if you're unaware of this game, it's uh, it's got Capcom characters in there. It's got some characters from Street Fighter like Kami and Nash. It's also got Alpha from Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, along with some other characters. And it's a kind of, whoa, well, I don't know, run and gun, shmuppy kind of game. And it's a lot of fun. Now, I'm colorblind, but the colors do look wrong for me. But the emulation, uh, at least on this, it felt sp uh, full speed. It felt quite decent. So some Dreamcast stuff is okay. Uh, I'm not comprehensively going to test Dreamcast on there. I'm sure there's like other channels out there. There's other videos out there that do it. Like I said, I mainly got it for fighting games. I wanted to show you guys how to install the, the, the custom firmware, the beta free that's available now, uh, because it does improve performance. And we're going to see that in the next game, because if you watch my previous video, uh, one of the games that didn't perform well on there now actually performs well so whatever whatever this uh, custom firmware is doing under the hood it's doing a lot of good good things that's uh, definitely making this game uh, or making uh, this device just a lot more playable another thing to point out is you know we've got when we when we make changes in retroarch they stick you know we can change our controls we can configure our stuff rather than the bundled uh, default one the stock that came with it whatever changes you make as soon as you exit that game they're gone so you have to keep changing them so that's one of the biggest reasons uh, that i like it is just the fact that within retroarch we can make changes if you guys watched my last video, one of the games that had a lot of trouble running uh, on uh, on the stock uh, firmware was Shadow Dancer. It just ran slow. When I when I applied Run Ahead, it was getting 40 frames a second. Without Run Ahead like normal, it was hitting like 55 frames a second, if I remember correctly. Now Shadow Dancer feels okay. It feels it feels okay for me to play and have fun. Yes, I'm having fun playing this. So definitely this custom firmware 
does something to uh, improve uh, frames per second and some of those games that are a little bit more difficult to run they actually run a lot better on it and honestly like I enjoyed playing Shadow Dancer on this device. And as I stated guys, one of the main reasons I got it is to play stuff like, well, Street Fighter on CPS1 and CPS2. So what you're seeing here is CPS1 emulation via Final Burn Neo via Retro Arch. Uh, and this is uh, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, uh, and it's a great game. It's an absolute classic. Uh, I haven't actually configured my buttons for this, so I'm just playing it. But guys, it plays well. And again, apologies for having the brightness too high on my device, and it's it's showing. Uh, well, it's, the colours aren't looking so great. The, the screen's really, really good on this thing. Like the colours are bright, they're vibrant, they're awesome. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun playing this stuff on there. Uh, the D-pad, the D-pad's just amazing, and it's just so nice to have this uh, custom firmware on there now. So it just means I can configure, change controls, save different settings within RetroArch, and well, they just stay saved. Okay guys, well that kind of sums it up, I really really do like this device, I mainly do like FPGA gaming stuff, but hey we don't have an FPGA handheld console with a form factor like this, so I'm definitely enjoying my time with this, uh, I hope uh, you know if you use this to put custom firmware on your device, well I, I, I hope uh, you did so successfully, remember you can't really break anything, if you just take out the stock SD card that came with your device and uh, you just uh, get another SD card and add new, uh, add the custom firmware on that you can just swap them around it's just a matter of taking an sd card uh in and out and and just replacing it uh so i, I do hope you're enjoying the, the firmware let me know what you guys uh think about it if you want to see more videos about this device i might do some more videos let me know uh if you've got inter an interest in seeing some more videos on this device uh because i do like it and i will tinker with it a, a bit more because hey if you guys are anything like me you probably spend more time messing about and tinkering with stuff than actually playing it because i know many of you guys have actually said that to me before you said you know what pixel we actually spend a long time messing around with this stuff then actually like using it and playing it but um that's really it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did then a subscription i like is super duper appreciated just as it is turning on uh, those notifications uh, anyway i'll see you guys around this is pixel cherry ninja out